in the race to the bottom dollar, everyone loses. That's the thing that one of my old bosses, my mentor used to say all the time. And this guitar, for many people, people view this guitar as a race to the bottom dollar. In this box is a guitar that I'm sure you've heard about and I've been very curious to try. This is the Gibson G45. Let's open this up. Before I do, make sure you're subscribed. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I want you to find awesome guitars that help you fill the world with music and friendship. That's all this channel is about. And this video is sponsored by Sweetwater. Thank you so much to Sweetwater for sending me this guitar. Now, they did send me this guitar and they are paying me for a review, but these are my words, these are my thoughts. And this is the Gibson G45. So let's dig in. If you don't know, this guitar is a very economically built guitar made in the US, made with walnut back and sides and spruce top. That sounds like a recipe for a good guitar that most people could own and be excited about. And uh, I'm curious, so let's check it out. And uh, this one came through, I used the guitar gallery on this and the guitar gallery is an amazing tool if you're nervous about buying a guitar online, it's one of the things that gives me the most peace is they get to see the actual guitar, the actual grain on the back, all of that stuff. It's just really cool. So check out the guitar gallery if you ever think about using Sweetwater. I'm gonna sit down, let's open this thing up. So like I said a minute ago, they the recent move has been a ton of really nice gig bags instead of hard cases and I think I'm into it. I think that I'm into the idea of a better gig bag because you have pockets and backpack strap. I recently played a show where I had to play on a college campus and there's no parking close by so I had to walk with a hard case and it was my house in Dalton and I walked like half a mile with a hard case and my arm was dying and by the time I got, anyway, it was a mess. So, uh, oh cool, so there's this really nice neck support in here um, big squashy thing and uh, man that guitar is very light colored on the top um, let me toss this thing out of the way now there's also the certification of this card coming that it's been inspected by Sweetwater and uh, Damon Damon K Donovan I think it's two different people but Damon Donovan good I Good work. I love this. This actually makes me feel like, again, it makes me feel better about buying something online when I see like, oh, real people touch this, real people whose job it is to make sure these things are right. And uh, so anyway, let's react to this guitar. Um, it's incredibly light. That is shocking how light this guitar is. Now I did pick this one in particular because of these two eyes. I think that they're really cool. And um, it's interesting. This guitar does not have any binding, no binding front, back, sides. The only real binding on any of the edges is the sound port and uh, there's a strap button on the back. I really don't like this. It's just personal preference, but I don't like this because when I'm playing with a strap, it makes the guitar, like if you just put your hand where that strap button will pull, it's gonna pull that whole guitar forward this whole time. But um, the guitar also feels really thin. Uh, it's definitely thinner than a Dreadnought. Actually, is it tapered? I don't know if it's tapered. I don't think it is. It just feels like it, um, but that's amazing. This guitar is in tune. That's crazy. I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll tighten it up just a little bit. This guitar is like actually genuinely in tune. It left Indiana, left, uh, it bounced around across Pennsylvania into Maryland, into Virginia to me. It was in the 30s when it got here and it's just a little out of tune. Also, I'm using the Fender Tuner app, which uh, is kind of funny using a Fender Tuner on a Gibson.
yeah, I'm just kind of meandering in and out of mostly G. Uh, there's some D, uh, key of D in there. Intonation is really interesting and really spot on. Um, so far, this guitar doesn't sound like what I expected, um, but it plays really well. The neck feels different. So let's talk about what's good about this thing, what's bad about this thing, and if you're in the market, should you think about this thing? So remember, in the race to the bottom dollar, everyone loses. So where are the ways in which most companies would typically save money when they are trying to sell you a guitar? The two places in which this guitar feels like corners have been cut, the first one is the binding. Uh, for me, immediately it feels like, oh, this guitar, it, it's like a Martin X series there's no binding and my first concern about that is not the aesthetic that's fine like I can get a, I can get away with a guitar that doesn't have binding as far as how it looks but I know from personal experience that this makes a guitar more susceptible to damage if it hits a corner and this is the kind of guitar this is the kind of price range of a guitar that you would take with you and you should and you should have this with you when you go and play at church and when you go and play at a bar and when you go to play by a campfire maybe that's a little nicer than a campfire guitar but the chances of you bumping this guitar, hitting this guitar on something are pretty high. And so not having binding makes it just a little more risky because when you hit those corners, you're gonna get a split in the top, you're gonna get a split in the sides. It's a little more risky. The other place that this guitar does feel particularly like a corner has been cut is the finish itself. It feels fine, but it's very noisy. This would be a tricky guitar to record with, especially if you're playing with any kind of, anything on your arm that would make noise, even just the sound of my arm itself. I noticed while playing. Now, there are other places when companies are making guitars that are particularly affordable, they tend to add things that feel like value adds, but they're a bit gimmicky. And the number one is right here, right there. This is a sound port on the side of a guitar. I'm not opposed to sound ports. I think they're fine. They change the driver's seat experience of playing a guitar. But with this one, I keep finding myself distracted by the fact that I can see my hand straight down through here. I think that this was added to make people feel like, oh, this is special and important and it's a it's an interesting feature. I, it's This is a bit of a gimmick. Um, it does change the tone of the guitar. Uh, overall, this guitar does not have as much bass, but I digress. Let's go back to what's good about this thing, what's bad about this thing, and if you're in the market, should you buy, a, buy it? So what is good about this thing? Uh, right here. This is my favorite thing about this guitar. I love Walnut. I think that Walnut is the future of acoustic guitars, particularly uh, made in North America. The idea of having a sustainable hardwood that is beautiful to look at and great to listen to. Walnut is it. It's uh, I'm excited. Gibson has been leading the way on that kind of guitar. I think the J15 is one of the absolute best guitars Gibson's made in 20 years. I think it's one of the best acoustic guitars that you can buy. I found one last year for what, 800 bucks or something? And my friend Tristan has it here in town. But I think that this is a really great feature about this guitar. The other thing is this guitar, it feels really comfortable to play. The neck is not a typical Gibson kind of shape. I forget what they call it. I looked it up before this. It's something like modern, traditional, or anyway, I'll put whatever the phrase Gibson uses up here as to what they actually call this neck taper. The specs on this guitar, it's um, Sitka spruce top, walnut back and sides, mahogany neck, uh, the fingerboard is striped ebony. The bridge is micarta, I believe. I'll double check on that. Maybe ebony. Um, looks like ebony. Could be micarta. Anyway, there's a bone nut, maybe tusk, um, but a really well-fitted nut. I'm kind of surprised at that. I kind of miss the headstock overlay up here. I wish that it was black with white, but this is definitely a different look for sure. The headstock is a little smaller, but the neck carve is really comfortable. So there's a lot of things about this guitar that are particularly likable for me. I didn't necessarily expect that. I thought that this guitar was just gonna feel really uh, value driven. And when I say that, I mean like bargain. The last thing, and this is where we can transition, into the things that I'm not as keen on that might be bad about this guitar. Most people have seen the Driftwood Guitars video. I'm not gonna talk about that. You should go watch that. Chris is amazing uh, and they have a great perspective on their channel. Uh, but for me, this guitar, it does feel particularly value driven, particularly in the shallowness of the body here. This guitar overall does not have that much bass. And I think there are two things contributing to that mostly. I think the biggest thing contributing to the lack of low end coming out of this guitar is just the extra side port 
it changes the perspective of how you play the guitar and how it sounds when you're playing it side by side. But I think it just simply, simply just changes the pressure inside the guitar. You don't have one sound hole, you have two sound holes. And so the pressure is diffused. All that to say, the lower frequencies seem to be lost. And the third thing that I just really, it bugs me, I don't like, is the strap button on the back of the neck. And I maybe I understand why they did that, but I just don't like it because it just constantly pulls the guitar forward. It always feels like the guitar is too far leaned, and then you have to get your arm and pull it in. So there are just a couple ergonomic things on this guitar that just miss it for me. Now, the last thing is, when guitar companies build guitars, when anyone builds a guitar, uh, you see the values of the creator. There's a whole spiritual life lesson in that. Uh, when you look at things that are created, you see the values of the creator. Anyway, chew on that one later. But this one for me, when you look at this guitar, you can tell that Gibson values their name. And they think that if they put this on there, you'll look over a bunch of other things that aren't as good or aren't as uh, important. There are two things. They value their name and they're going to use some gimmicks to get some money out of your pocket. I'm not trying to tear this guitar apart or poo-poo this guitar, but it's an interesting, you can feel the value. You can feel that they've done a thing to try and get people to like, well, it's still a Gibson, still made in the US. And those are the two metrics that they're the most concerned about. So should you buy this guitar culminating this whole three question gear review? I think that this guitar is really fun to play. I didn't expect that. It's fun to play. It's really light. I'm really interested and I really value uh, the walnut that they use. The guitar all together feels really good. Now it does not have a ton of bass. It does not sound like a Gibson J45. This is the G45. And I think the J45, I think everyone should try and own one of those in their lifetime. That or a Martin D18. Those guitars will teach you things about yourself because they're just so good and they're so likable. But I think with this guitar, it shares a lot of similar metrics. It's a round shoulder. It's a 24 and three quarter inch scale length. It's a 1.72 something uh, nut width. This guitar is very likable and it's very enjoyable, but this is the guitar that you feel like you compromise you would buy instead of saving up that extra you know i mean there's a big price jump between this and a j45 it's you know probably 1500 bucks more it's like what 2500 bucks probably for a j45 but in the end i think that this would be a really good guitar for a high schooler or a young player someone just getting started because this guitar it has the feel and the vibe and the excitement of a young learning guitar player it's diverse it doesn't sound specifically like any other kind of guitar and so with that i think if i'm looking for the silver lining in this it's very affordable 1200 bucks uh, it comes with a really good gig bag to help you travel and move around. Uh, I think that this guitar is overall exciting. Uh, yeah, overall it's exciting. I think that if you were dreaming of a J45 and you got this, I feel like you'd be pretty disappointed. The guitars that this reminds me most of is the Martin Rhodes series, which they probably aren't interested in me comparing these two brands. Uh, it also reminds me of the Taylor Academy series or the One series. And those are around the same price, made in the US, satin finishes, no binding. Um, so this f seems to fit in the market in a certain place. Overall, I would say that this guitar is worth owning for the right person, the right player. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. This is the Gibson G45, very cool lacking in some places, certainly contentious, certainly argued about and debated about. So tell me what you think about this guitar. Would you buy it? Do you think it's worth the money? Now, this video is sponsored by Sweetwater and there will be a link in the description down below. You can buy one of these that's just a couple serial numbers apart from this one and we can be guitar buds and uh, we'll be guitar brothers. So this one does belong to me. I'm probably gonna find a good home for this uh, here in the next couple weeks, but Thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. Go fill the world with music and friendship.